Um, okay, so um, hello everybody. I would like to uh, talk today about sustaining collaboration with people. And I would like to start with the story. It's a very long and beautiful story of my first job. So 12 years ago, I've decided to apply for my first job. I've just finished my high school. And before I started uh, university, I had a few months. Uh, so I decided to earn some money to cover some of my costs of, of the university. So that I started looking for a job. Unfortunately, uh, when I was 18 something, I, I wasn't um, like the most competent person on the market. So I started work, uh, looking for the job in the gastronomy field. And uh, I wrote a CV and I was walking from restaurant to restaurant looking for, uh, looking for, uh, for, for, for a place to work. And my first try was very exquisite restaurant. It was one of those fa fancy restaurants uh, where you can order a big plate with a little meal in the middle and you are p paying enormous amount of money for it. So it was my first, uh, first try. Uh, when I entered this, um, this restaurant, I was told um, that um, you have to learn a whole menu by heart. Uh, you have to wear suit. Uh, there are procedure for this and procedure for that. So I was um, attacked with a lot of uh, pieces of information and I had to learn a lot of things. So um, I can say that the, uh, this restaurant was highly um, well organized. It was, it was well organized and in the same time it was very, very constrained. What I also discovered when I entered this uh, this uh, this place is uh, it was that um, it has uh, also another part of dynamics. Uh, from one perspective, it is very structured and organized, but it also uh, contains a lot of different relationships with people, with chefs, with waiters, and there are uh, completely new uh, types of dynamics that I had to learn. A lot of intrigues, a lot of uh, discussions, a lot of problems with uh, with the managers of this restaurant, and I felt really, really lost there. So after two days, I quit the job. So it was my first uh, like professional experience, uh, <laughs> but um, I don't don't like to give up. So I started looking for more and I was looking for, for, for a place to work and after a few days I tried for the second time and I went to a very lovely pub in Gliwice. And it was really nice. It was nice. It was uh, full of... Uh, it has its kind of uh, unique atmosphere there and people working there were really, really nice. But I found it really chaotic. Uh, probably it was my perception of this uh, of this restaurant, but it was um, uh, like um, going into deep water from the very first day. So I, I I just didn't really know what to do. I felt really lost, and I felt that this pub is too demanding because I knew pubs, but I was always the customer of the pub, not the employee of the pub. So there were too many things to do. So I was just. <laughs> fighting inside this chaotic um, organization that probably for the owners or other waiters wasn't chaotic at all, but for, for me it was really chaotic. So after three days I quit. And I felt completely demolished and I started thinking what to do. So I went to my favorite club and it was my third, third, third try. It was a jazz club in Gliwice. I sat next to the bar, I ordered a beer and I told my sad story about my first work experience to the bartender and she told me, you know, maybe you can try to work with us. So the next day I decided to give myself the last chance. I went to this club and, and uh, the owner of the club told me, you know, first of all, you have to understand what we've got in menu. You don't have to learn by heart what we will have there, but in time you will remember. But you have to understand what we can offer to our customers. The second thing is you have to really feel how to carry the tray because it's, it's not good when you will, like, um, destroy the glasses on, on our customers. The third thing is, if there is a new customer, you have to approach him and ask what uh, he or she would like to order. 
Um, you will have your own uh, area of the club that you will be responsible for, but if you will see that someone needs your help, just go and help him. And the last thing, if there is nothing to do, just chill out, play chess and do whatever you want. So he draw the kind of line, the boundary uh, within uh, boundaries within uh, which I uh, could develop myself. Also, I found very very uh, that the team is very helpful and I have time to grow. So I had stayed there for two seasons, and it was my first place where I uh, I was working. Why I'm telling this story? Oh, that's me. Uh, 12 years ago, I'm shaking a drink because from waiter I became a bartender because I had this opportunity to, to develop my skills during those two seasons. Um, during the last 12 years, I was involved in many projects in Poland and abroad in many different, uh, in many different roles. Uh, I've been a UX design team leader for many years, business analyst, also bartender and waiter at the beginning of my, uh, of my professional journey. I was and I am academic teacher, research team member, entrepreneur right now, client sometimes, subcontractor, freelancer. So I had uh, been involved in many, many different projects and what I found that during those 12 years I have seen a lot of those models that I've showed you um, uh, of different organizations. So I have s seen um, systems that are really over constrained. They looked ordered, but, but there are a lot of different uh, things happening outside the boundaries of the system. I, uh, I saw a lot of companies that, that are really chaotic and I uh, saw a lot of um, companies that are solving very complex problems, but they can adapt to, the, uh, to this complexity and uh, uncertainty of the world. So, um, one more important uh, thing that I would like to uh, say, that uh, those things that I will describe during this talk are models. So, uh, they does not reflect to the um, every organization one-to-one. -one. It's, uh, it's, uh, every organization is, is different, so the only valid model is of human system is the system itself. However, those models are very useful, and I would like to, uh, you to, to follow me during this presentations and ref refer, we will refer to those three types of uh, systems that I have presented to you. And one more uh, important note, um, we can't really engineer the system like this, the system emerges, so uh, so, uh, so it's also an important part to, to know that we can't just design the organization that works in a certain way. We can create an environment for, uh, for, for human system to grow. So um, let's assume that we lead a um, highly motivated team of individuals. And we have those um, three types of systems and uh, each system that we, or maybe the, the systems that, I, that will become over constrained, chaotic or complex starts in the same place with a group of people who really wants to make a change. First, over-constrained system. It's an ordered system. Um, we apply some rules and uh, we ap ap apply some procedures to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to uh, make people operate and, uh, and, and do their job. So we define kind of boundaries, but they are very well structured. And when we have too many procedures, we start to squeeze people that are working with us and we don't give them a space to grow. So they are, feel more and more squeezed. So they start to collaborate outside the boundaries of the system. So the system become, becomes really chaotic in its nature, but it looks that it's ordered. So there are a lot of different procedures and things that are happening outside the boundaries of the system, so it really um, decreases the efficiency of the organization like this because of a lot of different things that are happening and uh, the things that people are not allowed to do. So there is a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff that probably organizations just don't want to have. Chaotic system. The starting point is really the same, but we don't send any boundaries. So we just allow people to do whatever they want. So they can grow, 
they can um, innovate. It's a very good uh, type of organization and system that we really want to innovate. However, to manage uh, complex problems, it's very hard to predict how the, uh, the system will behave. So in time, this system has uh, a very um, like a strange, uh, a strange view, and and we can't really uh, really understand what is happening there. And the complex adaptive system is the third kind of system, and it was the system that I have experienced when I was working in this jazz club. So um, we've got the same group of people. However, we define some kinds of rules that we allow them to, uh, that we ask them to follow, but we don't constrain them. Do what you want, but please uh, let's work inside inside those boundaries. And of course, collaborate. If you collaborate, it's great because you can innovate, you can do stuff. And you can uh, you can improve uh, things and solve issues much faster. Of course, you can also sometimes um, cross the boundary and ask the question: Is it the, this boundary really relevant? And sometimes it's not, so we can move the boundary. So this kind of system and this kind of dynamics is uh, is um, is something is, is the type of environment that we really allow people to grow and uh, to uh, grow and adapt in time. So we've got three types of systems. Of course, uh, that during a time, those systems are also dynamic and we can sometimes see that the complex adaptive system uh, become really over-constrained system because we set too many boundaries or the chaotic system um, become a complex adaptive system or um, chaotic system become really ordered so we can uh, in time sorry th those systems also also changes and um, I would like to tell you today about um, some kinds of principles of insight or insights that I have um, learned from my friends during last 12, 12 years how to grow the organization, how to grow a human system that is complex and adaptive in its nature, but it allows uh, people to collaborate. And I will not tell you how to build a team. I will rather tell you how to create an environment where we can sustain the team. Because building, building a good team with people who share, uh, share, uh, share values and, and have uh, a common vision and mission and so on, it's not so um, even difficult to do if you've got really, really good leader. However, to sustain the collaboration is a real challenge. So the first thing I would like to um, tell you, and it's something that I really apply as a, as the most important um, principle, is respect. The first thing is re to respect people, and I don't mean to respect our teammates. I mean to respect people, everyone, customer, client, subcontractor, freelancer, user, everyone. We have to respect people, so we build um, this kind of um, understanding and, and also we um, cultivate those humanistic values that are so important in our civilization. The second thing is to accept the complexity of the world. Um, we can't just uh, say that ah, the world is not complex, things are simple, but we are doing them in the wrong way. No, we have to accept that the world is complex. And we don't have to fight with the complexity of the world, we have to adapt to this kind of environment we are in and do our best to survive and to grow in, the kind of, uh, uh, in, in this kind of environment. The third thing is trust. And I, don't tell, I will not tell you about building trust. I will tell you about trust as a binary state. I trust you or you, I don't trust you. You trust me or you don't trust me. And all the activities that we do is, um, are the, our proof that we are the people who, are, uh, who, who really can trust. I would like to quote uh, my, one of my fa favorite uh, philosophers, Martin Buber, who uh, said that the origin of all conflict between me and my fellow brother is that I don't say what I mean and I don't uh, do what I say. And I see 
I, I've seen a lot of companies failing down because the management were telling things that were not true and uh, they were acting not in the way they said. And the team uh, decided to, uh, for example, leave the company or the customers were leaving the company. So it's in this uh, very simple words, we can uh, describe the most um, the, the biggest problem of trust in most relationships and organizations. The fourth thing is to prove the purpose of collaboration and to show that it's still significant. Because it's quite easy to build a vision of the company and tell that in five years from now we will land on Mars. I think everyone can say it, but please prove it. Prove it that, uh, that we really still believe in it and, it's in, and that that it is important and to show the significance of the purpose of our collaboration and proving it all the time it's one of the most important things if we really want to sustain the collaboration the fifth thing is to support people in defining and achieving their own personal development goals it's not about telling people how they should grow so we will benefit on it we should find um, the way to help people to grow we should find the way to uh, f uh, help people to find their own interests, to, to, uh, to uh, fulfill their dreams. And believe me, it's super important. Because if people are growing, working together with you, it's the, most, uh, it's the best experience you can ever have. Nothing, will, is, is not, uh, it, no, nothing is, for, for my, from my perspective, better than uh, in a professional relationship when you see how your team is, is growing and achieving their own dreams, not yours. Um, I would like to quote my sister who once said that team builds upon common goals but keeps evolving on common understanding and respect for individual goals of its members. So that's the beautiful um, summary of, of the thing that I would like to share with you. The sixth thing is to don't try to achieve personal benefits using your colleagues, but fully dedicate yourself to them. Um, it's also the thing that I really believe in. Um, we shouldn't, we can't use um, our friends, our colleagues to benefit in the way that they don't uh, F f fully, uh, fully agree on. We have to dedicate ourselves to this kind of collaboration, and everyone should benefit. We should uh, create the uh, the the environment where everyone is growing, because it's a fool's game. If you really believe that you can make money on your friends, go go with it. But by the end of the day, you will understand that you were completely ro wrong, because it's not the way to co co collaborate with people. If necessary, set new boundaries and question existing ones. So it's also very important thing if we really want to sustain a good collaboration is to, uh, is to sometimes we have to set boundaries and, uh, and uh, tell someone enough, stop here. You can't do uh, it this way because we also take the accountability and responsibility for the team. And if someone is acting in the, not in the way that we agreed on, we have to say enough and set a new boundary because we are protecting not only ourselves, but also the other people who are collaborating with us and also the person who maybe just not, is not following the, the rules because just simply forgot about it. So we can have this uh, moment of truth to discuss, but we have to sometimes say, say enough. And the last thing is to remember that fun is mandatory. It's something that I have learned from Tom Gilb. Very um, great, uh, great uh, um, uh, system engineer who always is uh, saying that all the requirements are important, but the fun is mandatory. So using humor and being just nice to people and having fun with your uh, colleagues and clients and, and uh, all the people you collaborate is, uh, with uh, is crucial. It's really important if we really would, would like to sustain a good collaboration. So I have observed how those uh, principles work in many collaborations. It's not my, um, uh, my invention. It kind of um, self-reflection and 
synthesis of my 12 years experience right now when I work with people. And I saw a lot of companies who are not following those rules. And it's not a single problem of those companies. Of course, there were a lot of different problems, but not following those rules also helped them to fall down. And I want to tell you that teams who cultivate those principles really exist. And I'm happy to work in some, uh, uh, some projects and initiatives that uh, really have, uh, uh, have uh, who, who really value this kind of, uh, of approach of, uh, of collaboration. Um, here are my, uh, my friends who I, uh, who, uh, with whom I uh, organize a conference in, in Katowice. And we've got this, those, uh, we are not um, those, uh, un, uh, we don't regulate ourselves, we trust each other. So I'm, I'm sure that we will, uh, we, we, we are able to achieve, uh, achieve uh, beautiful things and, and we do it for eight years right now together. Also, uh, some of my professional um, uh, experiences um, proved that th this way of working and thinking about collaboration is important and it, everyone benefits. It's a win-win-win situation. Last thought, um, when we already build uh, the environment where people can really work together and are very satisfied in their work and they feel this um, inner motivation, intrinsic motivation, and they can grow, really can grow, and they trust each other and uh, share uh, the same values and see the value of, uh, of, uh, of their work, it is very important to think what we say and think how we act. Because if you already are in the area where people really believe in themselves, and help each other, our actions and words means much more than if actions and words in, in, in the, configura in, in the co collaboration that it's new and we don't really know each other. I would like to tell you um, uh, at the end one story uh, from, from my life that happens in 2009. I was involved in one project where I was um, responsible for user interface and I, I, I was asked to improve the user experience of one software product. And I had no idea how to do it because I had no previous experience. So I was reading internet and I used only my intuition to make some improvements in this project. And after the project ended, my leader, Tomek Chapawa, took me uh, for a feedback conversation and he told me, you know, here is the list of things you should improve. And here is the list of things that you uh, did really well. And you know what? I think that you have a gift. You've got a gift to be a really good user experience designer. I see it. And you know, it, he was the guy who was a, uh, who, who, who was able and is able to build uh, structures uh, that can really adapt to uh, changing circumstances and who, who is really able to create um, very powerful uh, collaboration between people. So I trusted him. And I knew that I, am, I have no experience and it was the effect of my intuition not knowledge or experience the effect that he saw but i trusted him and i dedicated all of my professional career to become a ux designer and service designer and that's what i'm doing until now and i would like to fa fa thank you tomek from this place because uh, it it's it, uh, it it was one of the most inf in most influential moments in my life but i i understood it uh, many years later so during those 12 years i've met a lot of people who really influenced me and those people who really influenced me in the positive way were the people who i really trust who i shared uh, the same values and who i really wanted to co collaborate with and who uh, who, uh, who who were um, always uh, always with me so I would like to dedicate this lecture uh, to all of the people I met during the last 12 years who helped me to grow thank you